Hello everybody, this is Colleen with um, Artwork by Colleen. First I wanted to apologize, it has been entirely too long since I have made a tutorial. However, for a while I was feeling stuck that I just was making the same old thing and I didn't feel like y'all would learn anything new from that. But today, I want to show you how to make a really cute, pretty easy honeybee. All right, to get started on the honeybee, you're really only gonna need four colors. By the way, that's the end product. Um, this is the picture I started out with. And just to show you, as you can see, I decided to do one set of wings. I looked at a bunch of different pictures and I found most of them had the single set of wings. So maybe this isn't technically a honeybee, but we're just gonna go with one set of wings. So we're gonna get a gold color. Um, I kind of mixed uh, gold with a yellow. This is, I haven't been able to find the Primo translucent. And so I've been using Kato's translucent, but that only comes in a white. So it's not really clear. As you can see, it bakes off a little bit better, but it doesn't bake completely clear like I would like it to. You're going to need a tiny bit of white and you're going to need a little bit of, of black probably, you know, less than an ounce. I'm going to make this one fairly short and small so you can get to see. Now, what I did with this one, um, normally when I make a cane, I go ahead and cover the whole thing with translucent or some other color clay to reduce it down. However, with this one, because of the wings and, I, and the little tiny antenna, um, I decided to do it all as separate pieces. So actually, we're going to do one cane is going to be the wings. Basically, you'll want your wings twice as tall as the body because it's going to have to go one for each side. And if you cut it in half, then they kind of match. So I thought that was pretty cool. And then you'll have the body piece. And then what I do is I, you see these are, take comes right off. I just add, I roll out uh, some black and I just add little tiny antenna at the very end. All right, so let's go ahead and get started. Alrighty, I'm back. So what I did was I rolled the gold out on the your thickest setting, mine is a one, on the pasta machine because you're just gonna be putting them in between. And then I rolled a piece of black at the thickest. I have another one in case it's not enough. I'm never always sure what it's gonna be. The white I rolled out at, it as at its thinnest because you can see that's just gonna be this one tiny little white line right here. And then the translucent, actually I did it three different sizes. This is gonna be the full thickness, this is a one. This is gonna be the thinnest, which is my nine. And this is a, a three. So it's a little bit thicker. And the reason I'm gonna do that when we get to the wings will be so that we can add a little bit of this, uh, the, the lines in there to show the wing lines. Okay, so the first step I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make the head. Cause that's easy, that's just a circle. So let me go form that and I'll be right and That back. was pretty quick, I'm back with the head. What I'm gonna do to make it where the body's gonna come in play, is just push it in a little bit like that. I'm just using a wooden dowel. Uh, use a piece of a paintbrush. Honestly, whatever you got handy will work. See, I'm just trying to make it so when the body comes in, you'll see that little formation for that. And then I'm going to wrap this in the thin black. So let me go do that and I'll be right back to show Actually, you. Actually, I guess I'll just show you how to do that. So I just take it over here by the black. I'm very not particular and I'm going to cut the length of it. I'm going to slice off these little fringy edges, which are just going to go in my stack for when I need to, if I need to roll more. And then I'm going to, yeah, let's do this so you can see this. And then I'm gonna roll it around, make that little indentation there and come all the way around. Yeah, that actually worked out pretty close to perfectly. 
My head may be a little off kilter, but that's kind of okay because it's pretty, pretty easy to push it back in shape. Just get there and then you just wanna push the head. I'm gonna squish it down a little bit so it's not too tall. We'll come back and yeah, that looks pretty good. All right, so, so that I can see and it's easier for me to work right now, we're gonna flip this upside down and I'm gonna put that one little thin stripe of white. So let's just cut a little piece of white. Mm, let's say about that, about that big. Cause you're just gonna come up right there on it. I'm gonna cut this end off cause that's the messed up end. I'm gonna put this right here, form it onto his head. And it really, it just gives a little indentation to the top of his head. I guess that's what you call it. I don't know, be science. So if I'm getting that wrong, sorry. Okay, then we just came and cut it off. And there we are. Now when you, it's gonna be even thinner, of course, when you um, roll it out and reduce it. So this piece is gonna be the black thickness. And can you see that? No, you actually can't, sorry about that. All right, so this piece right here, yeah, that's about how we want it. And we're gonna cut off the fringy ends, which I always end up needing to have a little bit more. So I make my little pile over here of pieces parts. Um, now, in order to get it to um, look like it's coming down a little bit, I'm just gonna lightly angle these two end pieces and you can see just just lightly, not very, not very intense. All right. And then we're gonna scoop this up just like that. And we're gonna put it right here. Ooh, that matches pretty nicely, doesn't it? Yeah. Not too bad for just eyeing it. Now, if you see, he's got another little little bump there. So I'm just gonna take a little piece and I'm gonna roll it a little bit, just to kind of make it a little bit more circular. It doesn't really have to be perfect, it really doesn't. I'm just gonna squeeze it in there a little bit, make it a bit smaller. There we go. All right, I'm gonna chop off the ends that we don't need. And then we're going to put that on top of the head. Now, to be really honest, when I reduced this one, if you look at the one that's over there in the corner, this kind of got lost in reduction. It's kind of hard not to because it's this kind of soft clay. So a really quick story about the clay. Um, when I first started doing canes about a year and a half ago, my absolute definite preferred uh, clay to use was Primo. I'm pretty much always use whoops always use Primo to make my canes. However, um, don't know when you're gonna finally watch this, but during the pandemic last year and apparently still some this year, but since everything's not back to normal, there's been a real shortage in Primo clay. It is still my favorite, but it the, it's in short supply. So what I've been doing is mixing some Sculpey Three with the Primo, the ones I can get my hand on. And really I've, I've been able to get, and if I don't get the white Primo, I use a lot of, a lot of white Kato, but I like to mix in some of the Sculpey 3 and it softens it up. So at first I thought it was going to distort my canes, but in actuality, what it does is for me, it's been a little easier to reduce the canes. The trick is to make sure that all of the colors in your cane have a mixture of the two so that they're all the same pliability. Because I made that mistake once a long time ago. I tried making one of my character canes and only one of the colors had the soft clay. And that, that color basically, when I reduced it, literally reduced itself out to almost nothing. So it kind of was a hot mess. But if you use the same same consistency for all your colors of clay. It comes out pretty good. And 
I seem to have less waste than I do. And maybe that's just me and how I reduce it. Okay, but let's go moving on. So now we're just gonna start making the stripes, which is easy peasy lemon squeezy. I know, it's weird, but whatever. All right, so I'm gonna guesstimate, let's say that first one's about that big. What I'm gonna do is come over here and I'm just gonna really slightly give it the angle so that it does like it does on there. And it kind of makes it look like it's a little more curvy. So in order to get that little bit of curvy shape, you can just take your blade, see? That's the other benefit, I would say, of working with the softer clay. It's legit easier to work with when you're trying to change something around. It can distort pretty easily, so that's the, the downside of it and the one you have to be really careful about. Okay, so that's the first one. I've made it a little taller than I needed to, but that's an easy fix because you just come and lop it off. And then I'm gonna put the black one next, which is gonna be the same way. I'm gonna guesstimate that's about how much I need. Um, when I'm not sure, oh, I guess that's out of picture range. Sorry about that. When I'm not sure about exactly how tall I need it, what I'll do is just put a piece and then all I have to do is come back, if I can grab my blade, and then just cut it straight off. And there you go, it gives me what I need. Keep it in my little extra piles growing there. And then I'm gonna push that down. Now, I think that that's a little bit too much thickness in between. So what I'm gonna do is spread out that gold a little bit. And then I might just just a little tiny bit taper in the black. I mean, just look, see, just a hair. Okay, and then it's time for another gold one. Now, clearly this is just gold and black and gold and black. It's pretty straightforward. So I'm gonna finish up these gold and blacks and I'll be right back to show you what that looks like and then we'll get onto the wings. Here we are. Okay, and just like that, we've got all the colors there. Now, I'm gonna wanna come over here. Well, I'll guesstimate that high. And we're gonna wanna wrap it. Come down here, it's kinda of hard because this is my work space and y'all can't see. So, okay. So we're gonna take that. I think it's still too tall, let's see. Yeah, it's a little too tall. So we'll just cut it down. I'd rather just guesstimate and readjust than taking the time to like tape measure it and all. All right, so we're just gonna come up here to the front. Can you see? I'm trying not to block y'all. And we're gonna start wrapping the B. We're gonna, I just take my blade, push it in and I think we can see that I'm not going to have quite enough, which is just fine because all I need to do is grab a little bit more so I can throw that, cut that off. See, my pile is really growing. Oh, now you can't see it because I moved, but there you go. My pile's really growing. All right. So we just need one more little piece of him. So... We'll take this piece since it wasn't even anyway. We'll just cut that and maybe there. Uh, let's just say there. All right. Put that in my scrap pile. Come back and I'm going to start. You can see I'm going to start up at the, his neck. And push that in. Yeah, it was a little more than I needed, but that's an easy fix too, because all we have to do is just cut it straight down, push it on, and voila. Now, if you look at the picture, oh, we're finished the body already, how about that? But if you look at the picture, he's kind of got a little stinger thinger. <laughs> so to do that, I'm just gonna, I'm really, what am I gonna do? I think I'm just going to take 
I'm trying to find the best way to do this. Mm, it's fine, I'll just take a piece of this. And I'll take about that much. That's the scraps. I'm gonna take this little piece and I'm gonna kinda fold it in half almost, but not all the way closed. Jeez, am I unsteady? And then I'm gonna come onto the bottom of him. I'm gonna just push it on the very edge and then I'm gonna squeeze it. And if you get yours more even, that's great. <laughs> if not, it's also fine. And there, this side's a little longer, so we'll do a little chop. There we go. Okay, so now we got a B face. We can put that aside. And now we're gonna work on the B wings. I've readjusted the table a little bit because now we're gonna work on the wing. Like I said, we're just gonna do one wing, but we're gonna do a double thickness. Um, because the veins are so finely detailed, my pasta machine only goes to nine, but I really think that I wanna thin it out a little bit more than that. So I'm gonna come with my roller and let's see if I can flatten this piece out just a little bit more. Let me move this out of the way so I don't crush it. Just a little bit more so I can give it even a finer detail. So you want it, you want to see it, but you want to barely see the line. All right, so first I want to cut a piece of, this is the thinnest of the translucent. And I'm going to try to cut it about... length and height. It's going to be a little bit big and we can trim it down. So I'm going to go for this first middle vein piece. So I'm going to cut this off a little bit and the middle vein piece is only going to be about that big. Rest that aside. I always have my scrap pile. And then I'm going to come along here and then I'm going to I'm gonna do this. So it'll just be the sides of this piece. Trim off the unneeded edges. Pick it up. Scrap pile. All right. So that's gonna kind of be the center of the vein. Can you see that okay? And if you look up close, you'll see that that black piece is really thin, which is just what I wanted. All right, now I'm going to make this vein piece. I come over here to the one that's about, uh, cut it about a three. And let's take a little slice of that. Come over here. I'm pretty sure that's going to be too tall. Yeah. We're just going to trim that off real quick. We're going to come over here. Before we go get that, we're going to take one side of this and we're going to angle it so that it will flow into that other piece. And then we'll come here and we're going to put our angle and that piece on the black. I'm going to cut out around the lines here. And there you see it. So we're going to put that against the black. And we'll put this one against here like this. So first you see this piece coming out. And then you're going to have this little vein. And what I've learned, as I think I said before, is you don't have to do these patterns verbatim. And then I'm going to come over here on this side. And I'm also going to make another little one. Um, 
We'll be right back when I show you. All right, I'm back. I made just a couple of different lines here and there. Um, I think I need maybe just one more little one here, and then we can sort of fill in with the translucent. All right, so just to keep it a little bit different, I took this one last piece of thinned out black, and then instead of taking a piece of my translucent that was um, reduced to a three, I went ahead and did this one on the thickest one, which is the one, just to give it a little bit of depth and uh, make it look a little bit different. And now I think we have enough of the wing. We also have different sizes, but that's okay because that's easily fixed, just like that. So now um, all that's left to do is to kind of fill in, fill in the blanks. So along here, I might just fill in some little tiny spots. Um, that's also where my scraps can come in handy. Because like this little piece I cut off here <clears throat> can fit perfectly right there to fill it in. So you're just gonna wanna fill in all your little gaps with pieces, parts of the clay, and then we'll come back for the wrap. Okay, so we're pretty much done here. What I did was I made sure to get the look that you're trying to go for for the wing with it being as translucent as possible, because their wings really are. Um, I went ahead and made sure that the outside part of the whole wing had translucent on it. All right, so I think we're gonna call that one finished. To be honest, the first the first time I made the bee, so you can see this little guy sticking out over there in the corner. The first time I made him, I covered the wing with um, a little bit of black. But as I'm thinking about this, since the bee's wings really are pretty transparent, I'm thinking let's leave it like this and call it a day. Um, you're just gonna reduce the wing like this. Try not to distort it as much as you can. The beauty of not having any clay around something when you're reducing it like this is that you can kind of shape it the way you want so that when you're done, you you get exactly what you were going after. So I'm just here. I'm trying not to make it a triangle exactly, but I kind of like the hump in it. So if you can see, it's gonna distort on the very end, but that's typical. So we're just gonna keep stretching it out. Um, since I made two different size bees, I'm gonna make two different size wings. <laughs> Sorry, that's my daughter's dog in the background. Okay, so these are the final wings. Let's just make two little tiny wings. These are the ones I reduced all the way down. You can see I basically have two sizes here because we have two size bees. So I'm gonna take a little tiny bee Cut him. Flatten him down just a little bit. You can push his head in. Again, that's the one of the really good benefits of not having anything around it. Then we're gonna take the two wings and put one here. And one here. And call it finished, except that we don't have his antenna yet. So. In order to make the antenna, you're just gonna really quickly roll out a little piece of black. Just roll out really thin. And you're gonna cut off a little antenna. Stick it here on top. And same thing on the other side. And you just stick them on there. Better than that. A little distance, but not. there we go. Okay. 
Now, if you think you're gonna like the bee better with the black around it, like this one here, around the wings, then go for it. If you think you're gonna like it better this way, it's your choice either way. But thanks for watching this video. I hope you've learned something. I had a lot of fun making these bees. Again, this is Colleen with Artwork by Colleen. I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that little subscribe button and you guys have an awesome day.